Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to thank the panelists for uh, being here today. Um, you know, I think it's important we not lose sight of the goal that I think is shared by everyone uh, up here today, both sides of the aisle, and that is we want to ensure that individuals, Americans, have access to quality health care at a price they can afford. And I'm looking forward to working with my colleagues on both sides of the aisle to design such a system because we know the ACA has not done that, has not worked. And granted, there are some who have had access to health care for the first time through ACA. Um, and we're not going to pull the rug out from under them. We want to ensure we have a system that gives them better coverage, better care. But what I've been hearing, and I, of course, like so many others, uh, I'm a first time freshman member, have come through a 12 month campaign primary in general, and the Obamacare system has been top of the list in people's minds. Uh, and what I've heard from constituents in my district is what we've been talking about today. People have seen extraordinary increases, people who had health insurance before have seen extraordinary increases in the cost of their premiums. 25% average increase in premiums across the country. It's higher than that in my area. I've talked to people who have seen doubling of, of their premiums. And then I've heard of others who have lost their insurance altogether, who have been forced onto a plan uh, that they didn't want. Um, so clearly what we have isn't working. I think there are better solutions and I'm looking forward to working with the college to achieve that. The other, and I, I'm a, my background is a small business owner. I've been a, a small business owner for 25 years prior to uh, serving in the state senate. And I've spoken to a lot of small business members over the last year as well. And I'll just share one brief story. Um, a, a husband and wife team who operated a small uh, machine shop in Elizabethtown in the Lancaster County portion of my district. And they uh, pride themselves. Uh, it's, uh, they have 10 or 15, 10 to 15 employees, I forget the exact number, but have been in business for quite some time, have always prided themselves in um, creating a kind of family atmosphere among their employees. They see their employees as family, has all, have always provided uh, quality health care, seen that as an important part of their pay and benefit uh, package, and literally believed that they may not be able to do that any longer and were very, very worried, uh, not only about how it would impact their business and their profitabilities, but how it would impact their employees and their employees' families. And I think this is one of the impacts of the Affordable Care Act that um, um, we have to find better solutions to allow employers to continue to provide that kind of uh, service to their employees that they think is, is, is very, very important. But I, I want to get back, and I've taken up most of my time, but I do have a quick question. And I think, uh, Mr. Hasselmeyer, you had talked about self-insurance. Uh, as a business owner myself, we were one of those businesses that were self-insured. Uh, and uh, we found it as an effect. We found it an effective way to uh, control costs because you created a partnership with your employees and with the company. You designed a system that worked for employees and then created incentives for controlling costs and so on. And just recently, I talked to a business owner who said, over the last five years, they haven't had the kind of increases uh, that uh, many others have seen in health insurance. Many other businesses have seen. And when I asked why, I said, well, we're self-insured, so we've had a very, very good experience with that. I think you mentioned that we've seen a slight increase in self-insurance yeah. after ACA, and I guess I'd be interested in learning more about that and whether you see this as an yeah, important I, it, part the most, of the solution. The most notable shift has been a, a significant drop-off in fully insured employer plans, which is where you go and buy the coverage from an insurer on a group basis, and the insurer retains the risk. Those tend to be smaller and medium-sized businesses. Uh, up until recently, you know, the, the uh, self-insured market has largely been large employers, but it's moving down the firm size scale. That is by far, just to give you a relative concept, the, uh, the, uh, that has grown, but it's been a steady 2% sort of growth every year, but it's already from a high base of about 100 
started out at about 100 million uh, people in that. Uh, one of the reasons that, and I've been looking for this, I haven't seen a significant acceleration in the data, but uh, I'm sorry, the, the gentleman's ACA, time's expired. Get out from under the gentleman's time's expired. 